in house of the Lord tonight. Let's all stand together and you help us sing. Is it good to be back in the house of the Lord? How many of you was not able to be here this morning? Can I see your hand? You might have went to your church or somewhere. Maybe just get it and feel well. Two precious souls were saved this morning. Praise be unto God. One of them was one of the kids on my ball team that I'm coaching, his dad. And he's from the Dominican Republic. He come down, he prayed. I told him in the prayer room. It's the first time he had been to church in 17 years. I said, have you ever been to church? He said, 17 years ago I went. And, uh, of course, he prayed the sinner's prayer. You could tell God was just filling him up. He went back, and, and uh, my dad talks to the ones that get saved, and him and Brother Steve, and kind of minister to them and let them, let them know what's expected of them now and give them a Bible and talk to them. And... Dad asked him, said, would you like to pray? And he said, well, he said, be honest with you, the first time I ever prayed was just in there a minute ago. <laughs> Boy, and I'm glad. Doesn't matter if it's the first time or the millionth time that you've prayed. God's ears open to his people, amen. Oh, bless the Lord. So thankful for that. That blessed me so much. And... Um, we're going to receive an offering tonight. Everything that you give will, will go to Jeff and Sherry Easter tonight. Are you glad to have them with us? We love you. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask Brother Leonard to come at this time. Brother Bobby, you help him up here. I'm going to ask him to pray over the offering. But I want him to share a little bit of his heart too. Because it sure was a blessing. For those of you that don't know this young man, he turned 90 years old just a few days ago. He can barely see, 
but he's God's man. We're not no good. We just what God makes out of us. I've just had a good feeling ever since I've been on the grounds of the church is singing. And I believe some souls should be saved tonight. We're glad that you're here, and we're looking forward to hear the Easter they sing. God is good. He saved me 74 years ago. I couldn't keep myself till I go out the door. But thank God. Woo! Praise God. It's real tonight. It's real tonight. I don't, I don't want you have to get emotional and act like somebody crazy like me. But, but you know what? When you was a kid eating milk and bread, it sure was good, though, wasn't it? Well, you, back in them hard times, us older ones, you know. But thank God tonight. I've just felt that good peace ever since I've been on the church ground. I don't know what you're going to do tonight. But the Bible said them are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Yes. We're in the latter days. I've never saw a time I'm not complaining because God blesses us all more than our share. Sure. But right quickly, the devil, I've never saw in my 74 years experience and walk with God. I've never saw the time that the devil comes at your mind. It's not one thing, it's a different thing. And I believe, I believe some of y'all are experiencing that too. You can, tell, you can tell the difference. You know what it is? The devil sees you as but a short time to work. And Jesus is going to come and get us out of this mess one of these days. But thank God, aren't you glad you saved? Ain't you glad you saved? Don't forget the time you knelt down. Don't forget the time, praise God, that you were saved. Because God just just as real and you said, I felt so good. He's the same God today. Thank God it gets sweeter all the time. It's wonderful tonight. You don't have to be in a certain place to pray and just be going uh, down, uh, maybe on a bus or driving to work or driving to school or taking your kid. You can whisper a little prayer and say, thank you, God, for my little family. And I, I, like, I, like, I like for all the church uh, to reference our church. We, we got something good here. It's not, not good in us, but we got Jesus here, don't we? Uh, the Spirit, I've always said the Spirit's what gets the job done, and it will. We're going to have a little prayer and ask the Lord to bless you and bless the Easter tonight. And you just do what God wants you to do, and I guarantee you go home feeling good. Kind Jesus, we come before thy presence. We thank you for the good Holy Ghost we feel right now. I'm not worthy of what I feel. Whoop, glory. <laughs> It's going to be heaven one of these days all the time. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Help us to walk in the light as he is of the light. And the Bible said in the later days, perilous times has come, dangerous time. But I'm glad there is victory in Jesus. Bless this service tonight. Bless this offering for your glory and bless the Easter. Bless them. God help them to be able to sing in the sweet Holy Ghost like angels tonight. Oh, praise God and bless the preach word of God tonight. Praise God for them that's being saved, Lord. It's not the goodness of us, but it's a mercy of God that meets with us in this little building. And I know down at the old church where we started out, some of them said something's going to have to be done. You look what has happened. God is good. God is so awesome, so real, and so great. We're glad they... All of God's people here take charge of this service. As I always said, the Spirit will get the job done. And bless this offering to your glory in the name of the Father, the Son, and the sweet Holy Ghost Spirit. Amen. Amen.
favorite night. The Lord has been so good to me, I feel like praising the Lord until that blessed home I sing. I feel like praising the Lord, oh yes I feel like praising the Lord. Yes, the Lord has been so good to me. I feel like praising the Lord until that blessed home I see. I feel like praising the Lord. Yes, I feel like praising the Lord. I feel like praising the Lord. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel Would you make welcome tonight, all the way from Lincoln and Georgia, make welcome Jeff and Sherry Easter. To be back with you. You guys do not have a clue how much you mean to us, to our family. I love the sweet Holy Spirit that I feel every time I come here. I love each and every one of you and uh, just very grateful to be able to be in God's house tonight. Anybody else glad for that? Y'all help us come on. Little boy with a little brown basket thought it was crazy when someone asked if he could have his fishing bread Wonder who could have ever guessed it That when Jesus broke and blessed it Thousands were fed I'll bet he ran Tell others all about a savior and his amazing grace. And if you ask her, she'd say, You won't believe it when I tell you all that I saw Jesus do. I still can't get over out of all the people he could choose to help him be the hungry. 
we're here to tell you that God is faithful, y'all, over and over again. I stood on the bank of a wide raging river, trusting that I'd get across. And I've made my way through some valleys and deserts, believing I'd never get lost. I stood at the foot of what felt like Mount Everest, knowing I'd have the strength for the climb. But it's through every trial, each test and temptation, one thing is sure every time. Over and over, again and again, God is faithful. to come back to Hayesville. We are Jeff and Sherry. We're getting ready to celebrate June the 18th, our 33rd wedding anniversary, 33 years. And I got to tell you, y'all, she gets prettier and prettier every day. Every you day I wake up. You get more and more handsome. Huh? You get more and more handsome. <laughs> yeah, I heard you the first time. I, oh. I just, we love y'all. We love coming up here. We love Pastor Chris. I mean, Chris is one of those guys. He just got off the cruise with us this past year and uh, had a good time. We went rock climbing. Did you tell him that? Chris went all the way up the rock, you know, those steep mountains that you climb because he's in shape. I didn't because I'm not. I got just far enough off the ground so they could take a picture to make it look like I was halfway up that mountain. <laughs> But anyway, we love being here. And we love to get to travel with our daughter, Morgan. Morgan here, this is a special place for her coming to this church every time. She just loves coming here. It's a low, one of her low points in her life. She turned it all around right here, and I'm so glad to have her with us. Our daughter, Morgan. Make her welcome. We do this for all you mamas. I 
guess that makes sense She taught me how to smile when things get rough And I've got her spirit and she's always got my back And when I look at her She's just like her daddy. She's always playing practical jokes on somebody. So I was getting ready. Our buses broke down. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But I was getting ready in Chris's office tonight, and I was getting ready to change clothes. She walks up and dabs women's perfume on my neck, y'all. So if any of you ladies, what kind of is that, baby? I don't want to say you don't it. Move, it's probably some kind of floral scent, and you wear it well. Some of these women are going to leave tonight and say, did you know Jeff Easter was wearing beautiful? <laughs> so just for the record, I don't wear women's perfume. She played a joke on me. But she just got married in October. She uh, got married October 25th. Y'all want to know who she married? This fella sitting right here on the drum. Look at there. No, it ain't nothing worth clapping about, I tell you that. Every night I look back there, y'all, and just think one day <laughs> that's going to be the father of our grandbabies. That boy's got a million-dollar smile and a two-dollar haircut back there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> he didn't pay nothing for that haircut. <laughs> but he is a wonderful son-in-law. And he, I was going to tell you about our bus breaking down. Thursday night, we got ready to leave. And anybody that knows Jeff and Sherry, you know I'm a bus nut. I'm a junkyard dog. I love old cars. And I'm always fixing old buses, and I'm always keeping our bus on the road. But normally I check our bus on Monday, so if anything happens, I can get it going by the weekend. I didn't do that this week. So I get on the bus Thursday night at 9 o'clock. We're supposed to leave at 11. And I get in the bus, and I realize my front wheel is kind of cocksided on my bus. And so I jacked up the front, and the whole stabilizing rod that keeps that passenger side front wheel was broke off. Thank God we made it home. We were in our driveway. So I told Sherry, there's no way we're going to be able to take the bus. So we put all of this equipment. The only we could get is one, two drums in there. My steel guitar player, he's from Mount Air. He's not with us tonight, but he packed all his stuff in there in the back of a GMC 1500 Sierra pickup truck. And we've been 2,200 miles in a pickup truck since Friday. I know what that song means. I know what that song means now, driving around the world in the pickup truck. I ain't going down till the sun comes up. And uh, I lived that this weekend, didn't we, baby? We did. We actually went 43 hours on four hours of sleep. We were delirious. <clears throat> It was absolutely uh, an I, unbelievable weekend, but I, I want to turn that around and, because if I don't turn around a negative into a positive, then I'm just complaining, right? Yeah. So I want to turn it around and tell you the beautiful thing that God does when you least expect it. We got ready to pull out of the driveway. Jeff called our driver and said, can you come over and at least help me load? I don't know if there's going to be room to take you. So Tyler's over at the house. He's willing. He's loading everything. I'm looking at Jeff. Jeff said, what do we do? And I said, I don't know. I really do feel safest when Tyler's driving uh, because he does it all the time. It's not more than you. Not more than you. You are my main driver. <laughs> Second only to Go Jeff ahead. Easter. Go ahead and dig yourself out of that one there. Well, he, he mentioned that, well, I could drive. Landy could drive. Morgan can drive. Nothing against them either. Tyler's a driver. That's where I felt very comfortable riding with Tyler. I said, but, you know, it doesn't make sense to put six people in that truck. I said, he really does need to stay home. We got a call from Tyler the next day and said that, uh, surprisingly, his two baby twin boys were born. He was able to be there. They're both healthy and fine. Both got out of ICU. And uh, five and six pounds... So really good twin babies, and there's your applause. Yes. Tyler got to be home with his babies. So sometimes we don't know what God's doing in our lives, and That's we right. think he's missed us. Yes. We think he's forgotten, but he's got a bigger plan going on, okay? So we rejoice in being able to do this this weekend. Sherry and I have always loved to encourage the married. How many of y'all are married here? Raise your hand real high. Don't be ashamed. Come on. <laughs> now, how many are still in love? Let me see your hand. You better get them hands back up. Yes, Chris, I see those hands. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Sherry and I love to do that. And the way this song came about, I asked Sherry one day, I missed her, I missed her daddy by two months. I met Sherry June, I met Sherry in August of 84. Her daddy passed away at the age of 50, of June of 84. And I said, well, what was your daddy like? And she said, do you know the old country singer Don Williams? I said, yeah. She said he was more laid back than that, and that's really laid back. And so I stopped at the next 7-Eleven, and I bought the greatest hits of Don Williams. And when I heard this song, I thought, you know what? This would be a great song to encourage married couples everywhere we go. We did it on a Gaither video. Every night we sang it, I think about tonight. I gave Sherry this ring she's got on. 33 years ago, I gave her this ring and went and got but three more payments on it. <laughs> It'll be all ours, y'all. Thank God for the Walmart plan. You place gold on my finger and you brought a love like I'd never known. And you gave life to I Go on.
Tell all our friends here how you feel about me, baby. When I need hope and inspiration, you're always strong. When I'm tired and weak, I could search this whole world over. She got that right. You're my bread when I'm hungry, and you're my shelter from troubled winds, and you're my anchor in life's ocean. But most of all, you're my I'll take your friend by the hand and help us sing. You're my bread when I'm hungry. You're my shelter from trouble when. And you're my shelter from trouble when. You're my anchor in life's ocean. And you're my anchor in life's ocean. But most of all, you're my best friend. Friended. Anybody in this room ever need just a little extra encouragement? Some days it just feels like life has beaten up on you. You're tired. You want your words to count. You want to matter. But it seems like sometimes the harder you try, the more you end up disappointed in yourself. And that's when you realize it's not about what you can do. It's about what God can do through you. And you have to trust that the results are going to be his. Jeff and I have had a rough start to 2018. Um, right after Christmas, my Aunt Miggy, do y'all remember the Lewis family? Used to play up here all the time, North Georgia, Carolinas, out in Louisiana, Memphis, Pennsylvania. Talked to a crowd the other night that saw them four times a year for I think 22 years. My Aunt Miggy was the oldest of eight children. She never married. And you would think she spent most of her life alone. She spent most of her life never getting an opportunity to be alone because she lived at home with her mom and dad until they passed away at 92 and 98. She lived 47 of those years with her baby brother in the same house. And when little Roy got married and moved out, Miggy decided that it was her job to take care of all the grand, the nieces and the nephews and the great nieces and great nephews. And she was a joy to be around. She was funny. She made me laugh. But she was 91 years old, and I've had a real hard time crying for that. Because she was so blessed, and we were so blessed to have her. But she was my person. She was the one that I would call and say, Hey, Miggy, what are you doing? And she'd say, Nothing. She'd say, What are you doing? And I'd say, Nothing. And 30 minutes later, we were still on the phone. Everybody's got a friend like that. And Miggy, 
she was just one of those larger than life presences. So when she passed away, there was this huge void. Two days after that, Jeff's first cousin, Linda, passed away. She had been battling brain cancer for three or four years, and it was, it was tough to decide whether it was sad to see her go or a relief. And then uh, 10 or 12 days ago, Jeff lost one of his dearest friends, Tracy Stuffel with the Perrys. And uh, three days, four days after that, lost another one of his good friends, Daryl Singletary. So 2018 has started off a little rough with a lot of loss. But how many even know that that's kind of part of life? And the thing is, is that we are left here to make sense of things that just simply won't. Therefore, we just trust God, knowing that he's working all things together for our good. Knowing that he's taking care of us, that he's leading us down the pathways that we need to walk. And that he's given us the strength and the peace and the joy for the journey. And I have had on my heart this particular song since January 1. I've wanted to sing it every night because I feel like it's important to remind people that life is short and that it's precious. I've been thinking lately about the brevity of life. We buried two family friends this week, both with seemingly a lot more life to live, much too young to die. Time is a precious commodity, and sometimes we are so guilty of assuming it is ours to do with what we like. Oh, it may be for an hour or two, maybe even a week or so, but at some point in life we realize time is not ours to control. We can choose to spend our time wisely, living every moment in love and service to God and others, living with purpose. Or we could waste the moments thinking there will be an infinite supply. In this life, there won't be. As my friend Mark Lowry says, statistically one out of one die. The Bible states it is appointed unto every man to die, and that after that the judgment. As hard as it is to accept, this life will one day end for all of us. Make every moment count. Live your life fully with gratitude. Love from the depths of your heart. Daily share a smile, a hug, or a simple touch of your hand with someone who needs it. Don't obsess over things out of your control. But live your life knowing the one who is in control and rest in his care. This one moment is all you truly possess. So celebrate it and live. I am a poor wayfarer stranger traveling through this world below. There's no sickness, no toil or danger in that bright land to which I go. I'm going there to see my father I'm going there no more to I'm just going over Jordan I'm just going Rough and steep, the golden fields lie just before me. Where we rise, no more shall we. Cause I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd
sky My body rests Beneath the sun I'll drop this cross of self-denial And go singing home to God Cause I'm going Jesus 
Someday when life is over And I've said my last goodbye I'm gonna see my Savior standing at the door And then I'll hear him say Son, come on in, you're welcome All your cares are left behind And I won't have to worry anymore If you know it's saying you were I, uh, actually, the part Chris sang there, my daddy sang with us on our record. And uh, this morning I got, because we were coming from Pennsylvania to Lynchburg, Virginia last night, and we went through Mount Airy where I'm from, I got to have breakfast with my daddy. My daddy's 85. He got up, and he's a wonderful cook. He, uh, he and Denise, my mom passed away in 2011, and Daddy remarried a few years ago, and uh, Miss D, I call her Mama D, she takes good care of my Daddy. <laughs> and I want to do a song, uh, uh, Curtis, are you back there? You getting ready for me there, buddy? Uh, I didn't sound check the audio to this, but Sherry wrote me a song about me and my Daddy, and I hadn't sung it in a while, but uh, my Daddy's here by the way of video, he'll be able to sing it with me, but... Uh, Every time I sing this song, i got to share with you, he is the greatest man I've ever known. I know you, y'all can brag about your daddy whenever you want to, but right now i got the microphone. And, uh, <laughs> but he's one of those kind of guys. I was telling, because he's been, and I'll tell you a little more of his testimony later on, but uh, uh, I was telling Sherry this morning when we was getting ready there at his house, I said, how can a man that was so, I don't use the word mean, but he was so mischief, right? Mischievous, mischievous when he was younger, Got himself in jail, and he spent some time in prison. I'm like, how can a man that went through all of that be the most humble and kind person you've ever met? That's what God can do to a life. And uh, we recorded this song at the little church where I was raised in, and uh, Sherry wrote it for me. So, Curtis, if you will, we're going to do this for you. It's called Father Like Son. I guess I should have sound checked it. How many still got your daddy with you? Not here tonight, but I'm still living. Your dad's still living. Call him up every chance you can. I call my daddy every day I can. Let me have some of that in the monitor up here, please. Perfect. Thank you. Like father, like son, two roads become one, the old and the young, the father and the son, you taught me. the stories you told wanted you to be one in a world that was cold you taught me to listen Pray 
from a heart filled with love. Like Father, like Son, two roads become one. The old Father and the Son Now that's pretty right there We didn't always agree Didn't see I I wore my blue jeans And I wore a tie But there's one thing I know And won't ever doubt I know that you love me Chris when we got to coming up if his boys are going to pick I got if you don't have uh Chris's family's album you got to get and your daughter is she here what's her name huh Callie little mama mama. Callie and the boys yeah I want y'all to come up I want y'all I want to hear y'all this is special request for Jeff and Sherry I love your CD and if you don't have it tonight you need to go get it back there what are they Chris 45 dollars a piece (laughs) Huh? They're 50 now. They are worth $50, but you're selling them for 15 Is that right? <laughs> but no, these kids here are just growing up so much. And uh, I was trying to think, what's that song I called you and told you I heard her singing? One Day I Will. Oh, yes. Can y'all do that? Yeah, we'll have to get Luke up here to play. You don't, tr- you don't trust me? Yeah. You think Luke's the only one who knows how to play? <laughs> Come on, Luke. I'm 58 years old, but Luke can play better than I can. You know what I found out? It don't matter how old you are, Luke can play better than I can. You know what I found out? What's that? A long time ago. Don't open your mouth around Jeff Easter. <laughs> matter of fact, you ought to have seen me and him climbing that rock. You got talking about that. Yeah. And we would have showed pictures, but they, they wouldn't look good in church. No, it wouldn't look good in church. <laughs> They put a hoist on you, you know, and you look like you're riding a... We look like one of them, you know how they, in a mechanic shop, they got a cherry picker, hangs an engine? That's the way Jeff looked. He, he was a V8 and I was a six-cylinder. 
you rang the bell. I didn't. I just dreamed of ringing. Next year, I'm gonna ring the bell. There's one fella there. He's a big block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he told me about. I didn't know they drove that far. He just said we were tired. He asked me. He said, if you'll testify about 20 minutes in each song, that way Sherry can get some some sleep. Because <laughs> I haven't had any tonight. I understand it now. All right. Well. I, I just want to say uh, tonight, on a serious note, I, I love Jeff and Sherry, and uh, for whatever reason, he's took a liking to my kids. I think he tolerates me, but he likes my kids. He like he likes them, and I just uh, I appreciate him. And uh, matter of fact, he he got us on a on a cruise, and we're gonna sing a little bit with him on there, and it's next month. And if you're interested. We'll talk to you after the service about it. It's going to be March 18th through the 25th. He tells me it's going to be a lot of fun. He said, it ain't all gospel. And uh, I thought, well, good. That'll give us time to witness to that other crowd that's on there. So we get to go around and witness to them. But um, I'm, I'm proud of my family. Um, and sometimes, some, you know, they're kids. And you got to correct them. And sometimes they correct me. And sometimes they're even right. Believe it or not. But I love them and I, I, want, I want them to sing. And I always tell them this, Jeff. I'll say, now, now make sure before you get up there and sing, everything's right with the Lord. Make sure when you get up, you need to worship more. Because we live in a time to where you don't see a lot of young people praising God much. But through this revival, I'll tell you what I've seen. I've seen that section right there stand up. And I saw, I saw a young man the other night in the, in the meeting during the youth night. And nobody was standing over there and worshiping the Lord. And I saw one young man. He stood up and he lifted up his hands. And he had a look on his face like a devil said, don't do it. People make fun of you, don't do it. But he stood up and he did it anyway. And I'll tell you what. I was more proud of him that moment than any time that I've ever been proud of him before in his life, and that was Kellen. And um, what, you're up there bragging on your kids. You better believe I'm bragging on them. Yeah. That's something to brag about right there. You sing for the Lord. One day I will. Just 
How many of you are looking forward to seeing the King of Kings? one picks a banjo. Now, how old are they, Chris? 14. They twins? Yep, going to be 15 next weekend. Well, it's 14. I know how hard it was raising one 14-year-old boy. I can't imagine two of them. Yeah. Look at my hair. <laughs> I got some of that just for men a while back. I come in here and they call me Raven. <laughs> Huh? I think they're good. Yeah, we got an extra mic here for you. <clears throat> I think they got them. Yeah, here you go, kid. Yeah, big pole will play cotton. Banjo pickers are always slow. Uh, I've heard a whole bunch of banjo jokes. You want to hear one? You know what you call 500 banjos in the bottom of the river? A good start. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Little Roy Lewis is Sherry's uncle, so he knows. Sherry was talking about her Aunt Miggy a while ago, my favorite Aunt Miggy story. She was an old maid at 91. She told little Roy right before she died, now when I die, I want only men, I, I want only women pallbearers. Little Roy said, only women pallbearers? Yep. Said, they didn't take me out while I was living, and they sure ain't going to take me out when I'm dead. <laughs> She said trying to find a good man's like trying to find a parking spot at Walmart. Said all the good ones, uh, let's say, right, said all the good ones, the parking lot, said all the good parking spots are taken and the rest are handicapped. <laughs> all right, I'm ready. Here we go. I got a mind just like lightning. One strike, it's gone, buddy. You better.
ain't clapping. Well, have you enjoyed tonight so far? That, uh, that's fun. Y'all have as much fun as I'm having? I, I love it. This is one of those, I'll, I'll be honest with you, every night of revival, you're just sitting on edge, but, I, but I've enjoyed this revival as much as I have any that's ever been just because maybe I was leaning on the Lord a little bit more. That's hard to say being a pastor of the church here, but I'll be honest with you, every night, last year God was blessing and my stomach was in about 24 knots just wondering, should we go on the next night? Should we go on the next week? And, uh, but God, God really blessed this week I'm going, to, I'm going to share a word with you tonight, and I feel led to share this. I, I shared it with a, a basketball team last week, and I witnessed something today that I never really witnessed before watching a game, a basketball game in between services. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me. I'm not going to preach a full sermon, but I'm going to preach you a little sermonette tonight, something that will help you. And Jeff and Sherry's going to come back. And they're going to sing praise his name for us. And at that time, there's been three different people that said, I want to be anointed and prayed over. You come when they start singing. And we're going to anoint them according to the scripture in James chapter 5 and verse 14. Everything we do here, we try to do it just exactly by the book. And matter of fact, I'll take it a step further. When we go to pray, how many of you believe that God has the power to heal people and save people today. And I'll tell you this, if you don't, we ask you to step out just like Jesus did because we don't want any hindrance to what God is going to do. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, and if you will stand, let's stand together. In verse 16, the Bible says this, for a just man falleth Seven times, and what? Riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. 
I want you to look at that first part for a what man? A just man falleth how many times? But what does he do? He riseth up again. For a few minutes tonight, I, I want to talk about rebounding. Let us pray. Kind Jesus, God, we love you and we thank you for the fun we've had tonight, for the laughter that we've had tonight. God, for your Holy Spirit that we felt tonight. And God, for a few minutes, I pray that you anoint me fresh from heaven. Somebody needs to hear this. And God, I pray, Father, right now that you would just touch us and help us and guide us. And God, we'll give you praise and honor and glory. And above all, if there's someone here that's lost and undone, may they be saved tonight. And we'll praise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you can. Recently, I heard another man speak on rebounding. And I'm, it's basketball season, you know. And it was around 50% of the NBA players, whenever they take their first shot, they miss it. The first shot is missed 50% of the time. When you go down to the college level, in college, those kids that's going to school for nothing and they're on TV, and I like watching college more than I do pro. But those college players, that they miss 70% of their shots, their first shots taken. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that there's failure. Has anybody ever missed the mark? Ever come up short? Ever been in a place to where you just didn't get to where you thought you was gonna go and you were devastated by it? Your dream didn't come through like you thought it would? You're down, you're out, and you, you feel like you, all you wanna do is pout. I've been there. Let me say this, I've been there as a young man. I've been there as a middle-aged man. And I ain't going no further. <laughs> I've been there as a single man. I've been there as a married man. Just to be honest with you tonight, there's, been a, there's probably been more times that I've missed the mark than I've hit the mark. And the Bible says, Solomon wrote in the book of Proverbs, he said, a just man a righteous man, a just man, falls seven times. When you look at that scripture, I told Sherry before service, I, I read it to her and I said, you know what, the first qualification for a just man is he falls. But I'm glad it doesn't stop at the fall. The Bible says, but he riseth up again. Amen. That means every time that he falls, he gets up. Every time he makes a mistake, he makes it right. And there's a lot of times, Brother Todd, that I fall down, but I get back up. Why do we get back up as Christians? What is it about us that helps us rebound from that low state of failure? Let me tell you tonight. Because there's somebody living in the believer that has resurrection power. It is not meant for the Christian to stay down. It is not meant for the Christian to stay dead. Jesus Christ came, he lived a virtuous life. He was born by a virgin, he lived a virtuous life. He died a vicarious death, but on day three, 
hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He had a victorious resurrection and because of that resurrection, the power that resided on Jesus when he got up on the third day and walked down of the tomb and lifted up those nail-scarred hands and said, I am he that liveth and was dead, but behold, I'm alive forevermore. That same Jesus went away after 40 days of walking on this earth. 40 is a time of testing, a time of trial. And on the Mount of Olives in Acts chapter one and verse 11, he ascended back into glory and then thank God. Aren't you glad that 10 days later, 40 days, 10 days later makes 50. 50 means Pentecost. And in that upper room, Jesus made a call from heaven back to earth and sent the greatest message, better than an email, better than a text message, even better than the word of God that we have because if this wouldn't have taken place, we wouldn't be able to have the power that we have, but he sent them a message by his breath and breathed on the church and the Holy Ghost came upon them and the Holy Ghost got in them and I'm glad tonight that I have the spirit of Jesus living in me as a believer and I can always count on him. You missed a good opportunity to shout and clap or something right there. You know why? Because there's days that I don't want to get out of the bed. I didn't know Sherry was going where she did about being down. There's days that I can't get out of the bed. Yeah, but you're the pastor. You're right. And you know what? The devil hates me, but the feeling's mutual. I hate him too. And did, I, I, I like this. Here's what we need to understand. That old man that got up here and talked, he said something years and years ago that stuck with me. And here's what he said. God didn't promise that the crate wouldn't get damaged, but he did promise that the goods would be delivered. Yeah. 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 Amen. I'm glad that I have a deliverer. There there, there, there are times that I'm bruised. There's times that I'm broken. There's times that you're bruised. There's times that you're broken. There are times when when singing groups get out on the road and, and they go and they break down, but the breaking down of the bus is not the hard part. It's when family breaks down. That's why people like this need our prayer because they're going places we can't go. And you know, you know, I like about them, they laugh more than any other group that comes in this church. Have you noticed that? They got the joy of the Lord on them. We need to pray for them. We need to lift them. It's a different ministry than other groups have, but it's the same spirit. Same spirit, same power. But there's times from Billy Graham down to me, the smallest of preachers in the world, Missed the mark. And you know, in the game of basketball, when you don't hit the shot, there's a chance to what? Rebound. Let me tell you three little quick points about rebounding. If you want to rebound, number one, you got to be on the team. But you not only got to be on the team, you got to be in the game. Not only do you have to be on the team and be in the game, but the next point is this. You've got to have the inside position to rebound. I'm glad I've got the inside incision. The inside position. I've got the inside. Anybody else got the inside position? Just shout hallelujah right now. Yell boo at the devil one time. Scare him off. Let him know right now that he ain't going home with you tonight. He, you feel good right now, but when you get out the door, some of you are thinking, I know when I get back in that car that the devil's gonna attack my mind. Just think about this. You may have missed the mark earlier, but right now, you're getting a three-pointer. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, amen? You're getting all of him right now. So you may have missed the mark 
But if you get the inside position, you get a chance to rebound. You know the second thing you gotta do to rebound? You gotta have your knees bent. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm easy to see right now. If you want to rebound spiritually, you gotta bend your knees. William Cowper, that great preacher and that great songwriter that wrote, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Here's what he said. He said, the devil trembles when the weakest Christian is on his knees. Now, you might not feel very strong tonight, but let me tell you something. If you've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter how many times you failed him this week, this month, this year, the last five years, if you've been saved, let me tell you something. The de- all the devil's gonna try to do is keep you from getting on your knees because he knows if you get on your knees, then you're gonna be able to have power with God again. Listen, God wants to give you that power. He wants to give you that favor. He wants to not only give you favor from him, but favor with all men, but we must humble ourselves. Not only do we see that you gotta have the inside position, you gotta have your knees bent. Here's number three and I'm done. Could be the shortest sermon I've ever preached. You gotta have your hands up. <laughs> you know why? Because Listen. Listen, in every section, point one resonated with you and you thought, hey, I've got that inside position. But then I got to number two and you thought, "Ah, I'm not going to the altar tonight. I'm not going to do it. And let me tell you something. If you don't listen to the Holy Spirit of God and if you don't operate in obedience, then you're not going to get the blessing that God has for you. And there's somebody in another section to say, hey, I got point one, I got point two. But now for me to lift my hands up and praise the Lord, for me to sacrifice praise for my lips, I, I just don't feel worthy. You ever heard that? I just don't feel worthy. Well, let me tell you something. When you say that, you're being real selfish and it's all about you. But let me remind you, it ain't about you. It ain't about me. It ain't about how we feel. It's about what God's word says. And the Bible says this, ye that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. We've got to praise him. Is anybody caught up on their praising, by the way? Has anybody said, well, I've praised the Lord all day and I'm, I'm pretty well caught up to, no. We're not caught up. How many of you would agree he's worthy of our praise? He is worthy of that. And see, that's what I'm talking about them young people back there on that back row. Right now, those young people back there, what they need to do is they need to learn how to rebound. You need to learn how to keep your eyes on Jesus. Dalton need to learn how to keep your hands up. Need to learn how to keep the inside position. Mikey need to learn how to keep your knees bent. Feels good, don't it, Mikey? Mikey. Mikey got over there in that corner and I didn't know what was going on the other night. Boy, tears is going, snot's flying. Kids hugging each other. Let me tell you what happened. He'd been saved years ago, but he hadn't been where he ought to be. What did he do? He rebounded right over there. He just rebounded. <laughs> hey, that's good stuff tonight. We can all understand it. Matter of fact, a Christian bounces back better than a rubber ball. When you've got Jesus, you've, you've, you've got it. But you can't keep your head down. I really didn't plan on preaching tonight. But I wanted to share that with you. Because there's people that's sick. There's people that's hurting. And I, I'm not talking about just physically. There's some people in here tonight. Spiritually, you're hurting right now. 
Something's going on in your life, going on in your church, going on in your family, going on in your school, you're hurting. It's just not what you expected right now. What do I need to do to fix it, preacher? Get the inside position. Bend your knees. Lift your hands up. Let me tell you something, this. Where's my little boy at? Where's Coulter at? Come come up here, Coulter. Can you come up here? If he does it, I'll give him $100, but I'll have to lift an offering to do that. He ain't coming. He ain't gonna come. I thought he might. Let me tell you what he does. When he sees me, when I've been gone a while, When I walk through the door, he yells, Daddy! And when he runs, he's fast as flash. And when he runs, he trusts me enough that he jumps from his feet in the air with his hands up. for me to catch him. And when we get to the point in our lives to where we're running to him, because according to Luke chapter 15, when he sees us coming to him, he's running to us. (laughs) Oh, I'm about to get excited and it's time for me to quit. And whenever he sees us coming, He runs to us, and I'm glad that we can fall on him. Trust him. He's never gonna leave you. He's never gonna forsake you. He's always gonna be there for you, no matter what you go through. Shonda, you found that out, didn't you? Branson, he's been there, hadn't he? I'm glad that any one of us at any time can reach up just like Colder does me. When we reach up, he's reaching down and he picks us up and he squeezes us. And I like it when he squeezes me. Every time he squeezes my heart, that holy juice squirts out my eyes. I love him. Let let me close with this. Let me hit these young people back here. And kids, you get your eyes on me just a minute. Let me tell you something. There's going to come a time when you're going to be tempted. You're going to be tempted to take a drink. You're going to be tempted to take a a snort. You're going to be tempted to take a puff. You're going to be tempted to have sex before your marriage, which is unlawful and unrighteous. You're going to be tempted to go places, to parties, where God's not welcome. You're going to be tempted to to look at things that will scar your brain and hurt your heart, wound your heart. There's going to be times that your friends are listening to music and it's got a good beat and you want to move your foot and tap tap your shoe, but God's not for it. And there may even be some of you there that you've messed up. Well, let me tell you tonight, rebound tonight. Come up here and get the inside position. Bend your knees and get your hands up. And I promise you, according to the word of God, when we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us and we can resist the devil and he will flee from us. And all God's people said, Come on, brother. I don't know where you're at tonight. All I know is is I've obeyed the Lord. But as we bow our heads, how many of you right now could lift up your hand and say, I'm saved, I'm ready to go home right now. Should God come? Should I die in a car accident on the way home? I'm going home. I know that I'm saved. There's no doubt. Just slip it up. You can put them right back down. How many of you right now would say, Preacher, 
I'm not sure. If I died right now, I'd go to heaven. Or I know that I'm not saved, and I just want you to pray for me. And when I see your hand, I will pray for you. I won't embarrass you. I won't come to you. But please care enough about your soul and eternity to be honest with God tonight. Can you just slip up your hand and say, I'm not saved, or at best, I'm not sure. Is there one? Balcony or main floor, just slip up your hand. Now, according to your testament, God bless that hand. I see your hand. God bless you, sweetheart. I see you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, too. God bless these little young'uns. Now, how many of you would say this, preacher? I need to rebound tonight. Something's happened in my life. And I'm just going to be honest. I need to rebound. God bless you. You've been hurt. You've been knocked down. Something's happened. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else. I've let my guard down. God bless you. Someone else, I just need to rebound. I'm saved. I know I'm saved, but something's just not, it just ain't right. God bless you. God bless you. Others tonight, that's me, preacher. Now I'm going to ask you to do something for you to get the inside position right now on the devil. I'm asking you that raised your hand to get up out of your seat and come pray right now without any hesitation. Just get up right now. God bless you. Just get up right now. Come on. Young man, I saw your hand. God bless you, young man. Another young man. Come on. Get up. You raised your hand. Come on right now. You can bring somebody with you. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Just get right up and come right now. Find your place. Rebound. Listen, a lot of things happened to us. We didn't ask for it. There may have been something happened to you in your life you didn't ask. Maybe you was a kid. Something happened to you and you don't understand it. You don't know why. You've been bitter at God and God's saying, I just want to love on you tonight. I'll help you. I'll give you grace. I'll give you mercy. Would you come? Would you come? Kind Jesus, Lord, have your way tonight. God, men, broken hearts, broken spirits. And God, I pray, Jesus, Lord, that you help them be restored by your spirit. Lord Jesus, for those that's coming for healing, heal them tonight. Lord, they've called on the elders. They've, they've done all they know to do. God, bring that healing. And God, help us all through any part, through any failure, anything that we go through that we'll lift up our hands and say, Lord Jesus, I'm just going to get up again. With your help, we can rise again and again and again. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. As those, as we stand all over the building still, there may be some that need to pray. You come. Those that needed a touch from heaven, you want to be anointed. You come now or ordained gathering around as Jeff and Sherry sings.
God is good. Jeff and Sherry Easter. You got it, buddy. Come up here. I want to tell you this because you're going to love this. That song was written by a young girl that we sang with last night. She's now, I guess, my age, close to my age, in her 50s, or maybe late 40s, early 50s. She wrote that song when she was 21. And when you think about that lyric, young people, when you think about that lyric, that shows a whole lot of wisdom oh in the short years that she had suffered. Now, that sounds like something that an 80-year-old, precious 90-year-old man could write because yes. he's experienced so much of God's goodness in his life. But I love that lyric. Morgan, would you sing the chorus one more time? It, and y'all listen to the lyric. Yeah. Imagining a 21-year-old girl yeah. writing this lyric. I need you more today.
Amen. Jeff and Sherry Easter, did you enjoy them tonight? How about the Lord? Did you enjoy him? And how about our house band? I love those guys up here and girl. That's playing just, just a great, great, great night. I'm telling you, I, I still feel revival, don't you? Oh, my goodness. Whew. You want to preach, Jeff? I ain't no preacher. I ain't, I ain't as pretty as you are, Chris. I, I don't think they could look at me for 30 minutes there. I told you I need to keep my mouth shut around him on the stage. Listen, they've got CDs out there, and uh, they'd love to put one in your car and in your home and in your kid's car and in their home. Well, and to be and honest, we, we really don't need your money. The people we owe need your money. So, uh. <laughs> Hey, I, I started using this morning's message, Jeff. There's this feller, he lived in the second story, and there's a guy lived in the, in the first story, and the guy up in the second story, he was walking the floor all night, and all week he, he was walking that floor. And Finally, the guy got tired of it. He couldn't sleep. He just heard them footsteps, and he got up, and he went up there, and he said, Hey, buddy. He said, I can't sleep. You've been walking that floor every night. He said, what's the problem? He said, well, I owe a feller some money. He said, well, go to bed. Let that feller yo walk. Y'all would probably make more money if y'all went into comedy. <laughs> hey, well, I got one more good. Well, got, well, got, hey, Luke, I got a good right here. I had a dream. When I knew I was coming to Chris's place, I was tired all week. I had a dream last night about old Chris, y'all. Oh. I dreamed I died and went to heaven. I got up to the pearly gates, and St. Peter said, you can't come in. I said, St. Peter, I got to get in. He said, no, the only way you can get in is I'm going to chain you to the ugliest woman you've ever seen for two weeks. And after those two weeks, you can come on in. Now, this ain't a doctrine, y'all. This was a dream. So I had my dream, and I did my two weeks, y'all. And uh, I got about an hour left after my two weeks with that ugly woman. I looked over, and there was Brother Chris with one of the most beautiful women you ever laid eyes on. I go up to St. Peter. I said, how come... Why, why do I get the ugly woman and Chris gets the pretty woman? St. Peter said, that pretty woman got to pay for her sins, too. <laughs> oh! Oh! Hey, hey. Thank you. You know why that's funny? He had a dream about going to heaven. I had a dream no, this week didn't. about, I no, did. You didn't. I did. <laughs> I had a dream about going to heaven, and, and, and we were together. Me and you. We were talking. We, we've talked a lot in the last few weeks, and, and uh, we both going to heaven, and, yeah. and I, I was so tired. I, I've been working out. Yeah. He, he had. Yeah. But he's starting. I'm starting maybe one day. And, uh, What's that song your girl sang? One day I will. <laughs> But go ahead, this is and your so, joke. Yeah, we, we, I mean, your dream, no, I'm sorry, I, your it, dream. It ain't a joke. No, it's a dream. And, and, and we both died, and I was so tired. Even, I don't understand it, you know, we'd be dead, the bodies, you know. Yeah. But I was so tired, and you said, Brother Chris, you said, just get on my back. And you got strong legs, you kept telling them up there, I got I did, strong I legs. And I got on his back, and he was carrying me up Jacob's ladder. And we got all the way to heaven. And I said, Brother Jeff, you just don't know how glad I am that, that we made it. And I, I just owe you everything. And old Peter was standing there at the gate. And he said, well, hello, Brother Chris. And I said, hey, Brother Peter, how are you? Good. And I said, well, we're ready to come in. He said, well, Brother Chris, he said, you come on in, but you'll have to tie your donkey up out there. He can't get <laughs> I don't know when the last time I was in church and got called a donkey. <laughs> but seriously, go buy our CDs, and we love coming up here. And I love, and oh. you're talking about fun going on those cruises. We have a good time. Oh, and it yeah. is, the Oasis of the Seas yeah. is like one of the biggest ships. Last year was our first year of doing it, uh, that particular cruise. And uh, it, it's like 6,500 people. When you walk on the cruise, you're like walking in the mall. You don't even know you're on a ship. It's so big, you don't really feel the movement of the ship. And so the cool thing is, it's like you said, they have the skating rinks and uh, zip lining and all that kind of rock. I'll climb that rock with you again there, Chris. But uh, it's got karaoke on there. You can do karaoke on that cruise. I went through there a couple years ago. Not Well, not last year, but a year on a, one of them other cruises like that. Don't kill it now. Look, <laughs> Sherry dared me to go in there and sing I Like My Women on a Trashy Side. <laughs> Let me tell y'all, not only did I know the song, I knew every word of the song. I sure did. 
You might be a redneck if you know all the words to trashy women, I'm telling you. I think Jeff used to sing with Confederate Railroad, is what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you, I'm telling you, I've had a ball. We'll have to do this on the ship, because, see, I didn't plan on that, and you didn't plan on that, no. telling them, I know. them true stories. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my, he's my brother from another mother, amen? Well, yes, listen, go by their table, support them, and, um, boy, I'm telling you, this has just been a great night. And before you leave, just look to your neighbor and say, I love you and Jesus loves you. Can you do that? And I'll tell you, just in case somebody was sitting by their self, I love you and Jesus loves you, okay? God bless you. We, we hope to see you back on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and we'll treat you so many ways you'll have to like one of them. Let's get our Listen, hands up in there. Before we Whoa. dismiss, coming up this Saturday is our Sweetheart's Banquet here at the church. We'd love to have you here. Sign up sheets out on the, in the foyer on the Chris Rumfeld Ministry table. Please sign up because tonight's the last night. We're and that's for, that's for people. If you want to come, you don't have to come to church here. If exactly. you want a night to bring your wife out or for your wife to bring your husband out and y'all come in and just have a night of fun, what is it they pick their decade? Dating the decades away. Dress up in your favorite decade. And come out and we'll have a great night of fun and fellowship. $30 a couple. $30 a couple. Now, if you look like Little House on the Prairie, you're going to, share, you're going to tell your age. Let's get our hands up in there. Let's exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Be careful and good night.